because they think faith is a verb. They are not aware that the faith of the New Testament is actually pistis, which is a noun. There is an act of believing, which is a verb. Hmm? But the faith that our Bible speaks about is a continuing reality. You are not with me. You are not here. You are not here. Our faith is a, is, a, is a now, is a continuing reality. If I have a challenge, I will need to trust Jesus. I will need to believe in the Lord. So it's, it's continuous. What the devil does is that he sets you up so that you stop believing. You stop trusting. Then you become a victim of the error of the wicked. One of the reasons why the wicked is still termed wicked is because they have practiced wickedness and they were expecting judgment and no judgment came. So he has evaluated the situation and it seems there is no need for him to change his ways. Because he's been doing this thing for a long time. Meanwhile, the reason why God deals with us with the principle of long suffering is so that we can have allowance for repentance. The purpose of long suffering is repentance. You are not with me. So the Bible says it is possible for us to be led away with the error of the wicked. That means the devil arranges a situation then I am set up and I do something that is wrong and because God does not judge me instantly I remain in that wrong. That's the error of the wicked. The error of the wicked is not that you did wrong. It's that you remained in that wrong because the judgment of God was not visited upon you instantly upon the commission of that error. So there's a possibility for you to become a victim of this matter. Meanwhile, if you stay in an error for long, it means that you have started stopping to walk by faith. You no longer trust Jesus. You no longer believe in the things he says. And because of that, you can be comfortable in an error for a long time. Meanwhile, faith, pistis, is faithfulness. So despite the fact that my miracle has not come, I am still loyal to Jesus. Meanwhile, are you still with me? It is when you are consistent in your loyalty to Jesus, only those that are consistent to him and those that love his appearing are likely to be prepared for his coming. You understand that? When I say prepared for his coming, you must understand, I'm not talking about damnation. Because the next agenda in the kingdom, when resurrection takes place, and the coming of Jesus is going to occasion two things. The dead in Christ will rise first. So there's resurrection at his coming, because he was going to, he's going to come and release the gift of immortality. Immortality is what we arrest the power of the grave, and release those that are kept captive in Hades. Immortality is the reason why there will be rapture. Because life will be consumed. We consume humanity. That's how it's going to take place. So it, was, it, it comes to release the gift of immortality. And when he does this, he is going to commission the first stage of judgment, which is the judgment of the believer. 
Are you with me? You are not going to score good points if your track record is that you were found in the error of the wicked. Because before the judgment seat of Christ, there are two options of the outcomes. You can receive a reward, you can also receive a rebuke. And I need to tell you quickly the Im implication of receiving a rebuke before the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, you are, you are, you are lost. Okay, let me not go too far. Let me not go too... Uh, I was hearing a, an American preacher. And the American preacher was trying to... <laughs> he was talking about the judgment seat of Christ that um, there's only one outcome of the judgment seat of Christ and it is a reward, a medallion. Just like you run a race and then you finish the race, you are going to get a reward for your running. So he never reveals the possibility of obtaining a rebuke at the judgment seat of Christ. And one of the reasons why you are going to obtain a rebuke is because you were led away by the error of the wicked. Your faithfulness is a proof that Jesus is your God. Faithfulness in spite of circumstances, in spite of situations, in spite of the pressure. Your commitment, your allegiance is a proof that you have a God. Let me show you a few. Do you still remember Matthew chapter 7? He said, in that day, many... Let me read it from Matthew chapter 7. These were victims of the error of the, of the wicked. And one of the things that the error of the wicked will do to you is that it will deceive you to think that faith is a verb. And that faith is not a noun. Because it will rob you of what? Steadfastness. Oh, you are not here. Faith as a noun means faithfulness. And faithfulness is the proof that all of your trust about your life is in the hands of Jesus in spite of the circumstances. That allegiance to Jesus, steadfast allegiance to Jesus, is the proof that you have faith in Jesus. And the state in which Jesus should meet us when he comes, according to him, he said, if the Son of Man should come, should he find faith? That word faith is not the verb, that word faith is the now people that are steadfast because they believe in me. So what this error of the wicked will do is that it will rob you of that steadfastness which is faith the now. And you will be running on trusting that because you say this in a prayer long ago, even though you are no longer steadfast, you are secure in the covenant that was made available to you. That's the error of what? Of the wicked. Let me show you a scripture quickly. You know what? I want to be found at my duty post when he shows up. That in spite of the fact that the economy in Nigeria is bad, I'm yet found at my duty post. In spite of the fact that our money can't buy anything, we are poor, I will be found where? The poverty of the land doesn't affect my faith. My faith and the poverty, they are two mutually exclusive events. And I choose to be steadfast. Steadfastness is a proof that you have pistis, which is faith. The now. Let me read. So the first, this is just the first point. There are other points, other scriptures. The first point here is saying, you are likely to cease becoming steadfast because you are a victim of the error of the wicked. This complexity is what he is asking us to be aware of. This is a possibility. It's a possible outcome that can result from your life. You become a victim, even though the truth has come to you. He eventually became a victim of what? Matthew chapter 7. Then I move to number 2. So this is number 3. Dan gave us 
two points. And these two points are based on colorations on our organs of perception. I'm going to build those insights into an edifice. Hallelujah. I've never heard that before, so I have to go and put a foundation on it. <laughs> How many of you realize that Pastor Dan is a great teacher of the word of God? You know, those days when we started the ministry, there were so many questions. I said, okay, for us to prove that we carry your spirit, oh, pastor, should we begin to talk like you? I said, no, that's cloning. Cloning and, <laughs> <coughs> cloning and covering are not the same. Why not just be yourself? Don't worry. Any one of you that God gives the grace to talk like me, let it, let it be God. Let it be God. That <laughs> Don't labor at all to talk like me because God just needs only one of me, you know? And uh, just be yourself. And we began to labor together, labor together. And today, it's my time to sit down. We have some fine men. Yeah, some, it's my time to, to sit down. So in a short while, I will I'll be coming for meetings or just sit down maybe at the end of the day maybe if we have a conference and i'm sitting down for seven days on the seventh day i'll just come and say <laughs> <laughs> and we are seeing a beauty of numerous assortments of grace flowing with ease as ordained by god it, I, it's giving me an insight an idea of how it was in the book of Acts of the Apostles. There are diversities of gifts. But it is the same spirit. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 21. These are believers that became victims of the error of the wicked. Most of the time, the error of the wicked is a product of, it's a consequence of the fact that people saw the riches of God's long suffering and then they despise the possibility of accountability. That is a proof that the deception of sin, of error, of missing the mark, has caught up with their soul. So you ask the question, how is it that someone that is awake and aware, adequately enlightened by the word of God, turns out to be corrupt? The answer is, they became victims of the error of the wicked. They say, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Are you there? I need to explain that first half of the scripture. Do you realize that the Bible says that anyone that calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? Is that in your Bible? So these guys that say, Lord, Lord, were actually saved. They were saved. Their names were written in the book of life. I need to tell you about the dispensation because this scripture is a dispensational scripture. Because of my many journeys and many travels, I have not been lecturing in the Bible school. So when I traveled and I stretched myself and Satan attacked me and I was at home. So the Bible school people came and said, okay, you're at home now. <laughs> Come and teach. So next time I will not need to be a struck before we come and teach. There are some things I need to show you. You know, you know what? I need to open the whole Bible and show you this. These are the dispensations. This, this is, there's a mathematics in the scripture that if you know it, it I'll give you some mathematics. If you can 